Hello, welcome to Flipped. So today we are on sort preparation and uh, these are the learning objectives for today. Okay, there are four kinds of sorts that we will talk about. Um, and all sorts, okay, are prepared um, with two considerations in mind. One is uh, solubility and its reactivity. Okay, we'll talk about them later. Um, these are the four groups that you have to memorize, okay. Nitrates, chlorides, sulfates and carbonates. Okay, so let's start with the first one, is that all nitrates are soluble. Okay, just remember that all nitrates are soluble. Next is chlorides. Okay, chlorides are all soluble except okay, silver and lead 2 chloride. Okay, so only these two are insoluble in the group of chlorides. Next, sulfates. Sulfates, okay, all are soluble except barium sulfate, calcium sulfate, and lead 2 sulfate. Okay, so again, these three are non-soluble in the groups of in the group of sulfate. So next one we'll talk about is carbonate. This is not to be confused with these three, um, because this is talking about insoluble. Okay, so you just have to assume that all carbonates are insoluble, except for three uh, special salts, which are potassium carbonate, okay, mm, sodium carbonate. Finally, ammonium carbonate. Okay, so do not be confused with the um, white and blue. Okay, although they are all except, but the white ones are insoluble. Okay, because these three are soluble, except these five white ones. Whereas for the blue ones, they are soluble. Because in carbonates, all of them are insoluble. These three blue ones are the uh, exception because they are soluble. Okay, that's why I made a distinction uh, of colors here, yellow and green. Okay, so please do not be confused um, and just assume that all of them are insoluble. No, okay, only the first five are insoluble. These three are actually soluble. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, let's talk about how to uh, prepare salts. Okay, all these reactions are actually uh, being talked about in um, in the previous videos. Okay, this is just more like a, a video of how to, how to prepare them, okay, the methods, etc., and what are their what are their um limitations and advantages? Okay, that's the difference between this and the previous videos, which um focus more on the reactivity. Okay, so you can see that there are four ways to prepare salts. First one to prepare insoluble salt, we have metal with acid. Okay, react with metal with acid. Second is to react insoluble base with an acid. Third one is using titration method. Okay, so there are three for soluble salts. Then there's only one for um insoluble salt, which is precipitation. Okay, we should talk about them. Uh, talk about that in the la uh, the last uh portion. Let's start with the first one, metal with acid. Okay, so you can see that this is metal with acid. Okay, um, this is the reaction that we have talked about in the previous video. This is magnesium metal. Okay, reacting with a uh, uh, hydrochloric acid. Okay, so it's metal with acid. To give you a salt, okay, with a hydrogen gas. This is not so much important here. This is the one that we want. Okay, this is a um sort of interest. Okay, how this works is that okay, the principle is to just really add excess metal to acid. Okay, excess metal to acid. Okay, that means you add a lot of this. This is just in um limited amount. Then you filter off the excess metal. How this works is very simple. So imagine you have a beaker, okay with uh, acid here and then you just have to put in your magnesium metal inside okay so it actually becomes like this okay assuming your magnesium metal is uh, for example blue in color okay so you will have uh, this uh, solution okay with this uh, magnesium metal in it correct so you have to know that magnesium is not soluble in this uh, the solution okay as in the excess magnesium is not soluble in the solution okay so when you react 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 okay maybe that's a you have to use heat to accelerate the reaction okay you actually form maybe say this new salt okay which is uh this salt solution which is for example brown in color okay maybe brown in color is talking about mgcl2 solution Okay, this is still the Mg metal, Mg metal, Mg metal. 
Okay, so this is the step where they have reacted, and this becomes the salt. Uh, the salt solution is uh in is soluble in the um, uh the acid. Okay, so what what next is to filter off the excess metal. Okay, so you can just uh do a normal filtration. Okay, um to get rid of this uh magnesium. Okay, because it's solid and liquid. So to separate solid and liquid phase, what do you use? Okay, you just use uh filtration. Okay. So now, now what you get is really just a very simple salt solution of uh, Mg, MgCl2, am I right? Okay, assuming it's brown, okay, <laughs> it's not brown color, but just assuming, okay. So this is uh, soluble, that's why you cannot just take it out um, using like, a, like tweezers or something, okay, because it's, it's soluble in this uh, mixture, in this liquid. So what you do next is using evaporation or crystallization. Okay, evaporation and crystallization, remember that they are to, um, to extract, okay, soluble solids. And we talked about this in the first, uh, first, few, de first few videos of this uh, channel. Okay, so once you um, recover the salt, okay, you will now get your MgCl solid. Okay, this is MgCl solid. Okay, without the um the liquid without the liquid phase. Okay, so this is a solid obtained. And that is the principle behind uh reacting with uh, acid. Okay? So what are the good things and bad things about this uh reaction? Is that the advantage is that excess metal can be easily separated. Okay, you can see that this is the excess metal, am I right? You just have to do filtration and you'll remove it immediately, easily. Um the bad thing, okay, dangerous thing is that, okay, if it's using reactive metals, okay, for example, these are group 1 metals, you will learn that in the next uh, chapter that we will talk about, okay, they are very reactive. Group 1 metals, okay, if you use it with this reaction, okay, it will be very explosive, okay, it can, uh, it's very dangerous lah, so you shouldn't do this uh, reaction. Okay, also, this is unsuitable for unreactive metal which do not react with dilute acid, okay, for example, uh, in the case of copper, okay, so you have to use concentrated acid to react with copper, but that's not a good thing, especially in our normal labs, right? Because we don't want uh, excess uh extra risk to uh take take place, okay? Extra uh, bad things to happen. So we usually use dilute dilute acid, and dilute acid cannot react with copper, okay? So this is a uh, a disadvantage of reacting with uh unreactive metal. Finally, it's not suitable to create insoluble salts, okay? Because it's hard to separate salt from metal. So imagine if I created a salt, okay? Imagine at this step, I created a salt. Okay, there's still this uh, liquid here, okay? And there's still our excess uh, magnesium metal, am I right? Okay, this are magnesium metal. Then I created a new salt, for example, this one, okay? And they are all in powder form. Okay, is it is it hard to remove the yellow salt from the magnesium metal? Obviously, right? Because um, you cannot uh, physically you can physically take out one piece by piece, but it will take forever. Okay, so it's literally impossible, and that's why it's um, if you form insoluble salt which cannot dissolve in the acid, okay, the liquid here, it's uh hard to separate the salt from metal. This is what it means. Okay, so imagine you have. Uh, salt and pepper, that's the easiest way to, to imagine, okay? You have uh, all this magnesium metal surrounding the salt. Okay, you want to take out all the magnesium metal, take out all the salt, it's impossible. Okay, so this is what it means to be uh, unsuitable for forming insoluble salts. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Okay, let's look at the second way to, uh, to form a soluble salt. The second way is really just to react insoluble base or carbonate with acid. Okay, so insoluble base, there are a few examples. Okay, in the case here, I gave you uh, um, magnesium oxide and magnesium hydroxide. Okay, these are insoluble bases. And uh, for the carbonate, okay, I gave you magnesium carbonate. Okay, so really, you look at the principle, is to add excess uh, insoluble base or carbonate to acid, filter off this excess uh, carbonate or acid, or carbonate or base, Okay, and then you recover using evaporation or crystallization. So it's really it's really what we have talked about um previously. Okay, uh, in the case of uh the one with the metal with acid. Okay, on top. So when you throw in your insoluble base or carbonate, okay, a reaction happens. Okay, so for example, 
um, my base or carbonate is blue in color. I throw it inside here. Okay, then the same thing happens. Uh, my reaction, okay, my salt solution will actually form, for example, a brown color. And then my base is still present. Okay, and then I filter off my... I filter off my uh, excess uh, carbonate or base to get me this uh, salt solution only. Okay, this salt solution only, which I will then use it to do evaporation or crystallization to give me my pure um, salt. Okay, in this case, it's magnesium chloride. Okay, hopefully that's clear. So recap. You have to just add in this one in excess, um, let the reaction take place, filter off this uh, blue one, which is the, mag the magnesium oxide, hydroxide or carbonate, evaporation or crystallization to give you the salt. Okay, The advantage of this method is that excess base are easily uh, separated from salt. Okay, uh, This is the same as the metal one. And there's no restriction on the reactivity of metal. Remember in the previous one, Okay, let me just show you. We, uh, I told you that uh, you cannot use reactive metals, okay? For example, group one metals, because it will cause explosion. Um, but in this case, you can use any metals that you want, because you are in this case you are using uh, metal hydroxide oxide or metal carbonate. You are not using a pure metal. If the you are using a pure metal, okay? Pure metal is very dis destructive, okay? Uh, it's explosive also, so you cannot. There's a limit to what you can use. But in the case of uh, using base and carbonate, okay, they are less reactive than pure metals. Okay, so you can use any metal that you want and there's no re restriction now. Okay, so this is the one uh, advantage over the first method that you have to uh, remember. Second one, okay, the, the cons of this method is the same as the previous method. It's just that it's insoluble to form uh, insoluble salts. Okay, in the case of uh, this one again, so if I have my salt here, okay, this is MgCl2, okay, then I still have my magnesium salt here, the blue ones, okay. Now it's impossible to separate the magnesium chloride with the magnesium salt, magnesium metal, all right, because uh, uh, sorry, not magnesium metal, magnesium oxide, for example, okay, because they are all um stuck together, okay. You cannot, you cannot. So this is the case of uh, salt and pepper again. You cannot just take out the salt from the pepper okay so it's the same uh, logic here and this is just a recap of what, what we have covered in the alkali chapter okay this is just magnesium carbonate reacting with acid to give you the salt carbon dioxide water magnesium oxide with acid salt water magnesium hydroxide with acid gives you salt and water okay so these are all the salts that we are talking about in this uh, portion here okay finally let's move on to titration method Okay, titration method is uh is more interesting, I would say. <laughs> okay. This is the reaction for titration method. It's really just using a uh, alkali. Okay, uh with uh, acid to give us a salt and water. Okay, it's very simple. Using using this uh, neutral neutralization uh, reaction. Okay? Because uh you can see that, okay, the principle is really just to react alkali with acid via neutralization using a suitable indicator to observe color change. Okay, let me just read through this one, then I'll show you in terms of the diagram. Okay, then you record the amount of alkali needed to neutralize acid. Repeat reaction with, without indicator. Okay, this is important. Then you result in a salt solution without excess alkali or salt, or ex excess alkali or acid. Then you recover them via evaporation and crystallization. Okay, same as the previous two methods. Okay, in terms of uh, this diagram, let me show you how, how it's done. Okay, so you have your, um, this is your burette. Okay, burette is this uh, long tube thing with a knob here okay, that you can turn. Okay, so this one you can turn it around okay, to on and off the tap. Okay, so in your burette, you have your base here, okay, your alkali here. Okay, with, in your titration flask, you have your acid with indicator. So you can see that at the beginning of the uh, experiment, base and acid is separated. And the acid is together with the indicator. Uh, for example, phenolphthalein or methyl orange. Okay, anything. Okay, so when this 
So at the beginning, okay, this is a certain color. Okay, in the case of uh, say, in the case of say um, let's say metal orange. Okay, let's use orange. Okay, in the case of metal orange. Okay, what's remember, do you remember the pH for this? Okay, let me just write it out again. Metal orange is red at 0 to 4 pH and yellow at 4 to 14 pH. Okay, so this one uh, you have to remember. Okay, so at the beginning, okay, this is uh, red in color, am I right? This is red in color. Okay, and then you slowly add your acid, your base, sorry, you add your base until it, okay, because when you add your base, the pH increases, am I right? Okay, because this acid, so it's closer to 0. Base is closer to, uh, let me draw the scale for you. This is uh, 0, this is 14. Okay, this is 7. This is acid. This is base. Am I right? Okay, so at the beginning, for example, uh, maybe say here. here. Maybe it's at pH 1 now, for example. As I add, as I add more base, okay, it increases am i right now it's two now it's three etc it keep keeps going this left uh, rightward direction until it hits for example uh four ph4 and then now it changes color to yellow okay makes sense right because when i add more base the acidity decreases basicity increase and my ph increase okay so when you when you see that the um solution turns to yellow that's where you stop the reaction. That's where you turn off the tap. And now you know, oh, okay, for example, I need, uh, for example, say 15 cm cube. Okay, 15, the volume, 15 cm cube of base to neutralize this acid. Okay, because the moment it turns from red to yellow now, I know, oh, okay, that's the amount of base I need. Okay, so you take note of this, uh, this volume, 15, 15 cm cube. And you repeat this whole experiment again now without this indicator because you already know that uh, with the indicator just now 15 cm cube is all I need so now I don't even need this indicator because I already have the number here and this is what we mean when you use uh, when you repeat the reaction without indicator this will give you a salt solution without excess alkali and acid because ultimately I want all my H plus okay to be cancelled out with OH minuses. I do not want any H plus or OH minus remaining. Makes sense, right? I want all of them to be uh, neutralized to form water. At the end, I really just want my salt and water, okay, which can be removed easily so I can get my salt. Okay, hopefully that's clear. And this is, uh, so after that, you can just uh, recover salt using via evaporation and crystallization. Okay, that will just remove all the water. The, the advantage of this method is that it's the only way to prepare ammonium, potassium, and sodium. Because you remember from uh, the previous one that we talked about, is that carbonates, okay, they are all insoluble except to create this tree. Okay, and to create these three carbonates, okay, we have really no choice but to use titration method. Okay, which, uh, which yeah, gives you only... Is the only way to create this three um, salt, okay? Pota uh, potassium carbonate, ammonium carbonate, and sodium carbonate. Okay, but the bad thing is that because you are okay, maybe you have already you can already tell okay when I um explain about this diagram, you will say that hey um but how do you know I'm accurate? Okay, how do I know it's not fourteen point nine? How do I not know it's fifteen point one for example? And you're right, okay, because that's human error. Okay, you really you really won't know how much exactly um to add okay although you see that oh the color has changed from red to yellow yes but it may change before a little you know you know what i mean okay, it can change at 15 14.9 but you add a, li a little bit too much and now it's 15 and it changes color as well so you can then you will tell yourself oh that's 15 but it might not be correct okay it might be actually at 15 14.9 and this is what we talk about this is what we mean by human error and it result in traces of alkali and acid, which is not what we want. Because now we can see that we will have, oh, extra H plus floating around in our salt and water solution, which is not what we want. We really just want salt and water. Okay, so this is the um, disadvantage of titration method, is that there's human error. Okay, 
Finally, we'll move on to uh, the precipitation method. Finally, we move on to precipitation, which is to really just form insoluble salt. And this is the only way to form insoluble salt. And the previous three methods we talked about is to form uh, soluble salts. Okay, the principle is really very simple. It's really just to add excess alkali to acid. Okay, in the case of our beaker here, okay, alkali we use blue color. This is our, oh no, sorry, we should use acid. Okay, um, this is our beaker. Acid is red color, right? We always like to imagine acid as red color. And alkali is blue color. Okay, so when we throw in uh, excess alkali to acid, okay, they react via neutralization. This is what you get. Okay, uh, all the acid will be used up because alkali is in excess. Am I right? So all alkali, all acid is used up by alkali uh, via neutralization. And what remains here in our beaker here, it's only just uh, alkali. Okay, very little. And salt. Okay, this salt is insoluble in the alkali. This is the insoluble in uh, the alkali and water. Okay, because neutralization forms water as well. So this is not just alkali, this is alkali in water. Okay, so please remember, this is not just alkali, this is alkali with water, because water is formed here. And these uh, white solids are all zinc chloride, for example. Okay, they are insoluble in this this mixture here so what you really can do now is really just to filter it off and when you filter it off okay with the filter paper here am i right and you will just get all this uh zinc chloride solids here okay it's very simple and this uh, all the liquid will be washed down here okay so you have essentially separated them and this is one example in the case of a zinc oxide okay we use it to react with a hydrochlor uh, with a carbonic acid, okay, to give us a zinc carbonate. Okay, zinc carbonate is insoluble. Okay, and hence you can just re remove via and you can just remove via a uh, filtration to give you the zinc carbonate solid. It's super simple. Okay, the uh, advantage of this is that it's easy to separate from solution. Okay, to separate this uh, salt from solution. But the disadvantage is that you cannot use this method for soluble salts. Okay, soluble salts, there are only three ways to go about it. First one is uh, reacting metal with acid. Second one is uh, reacting um, base with acid. Last one is titration. Okay, so that is uh, the end for this um, salt formation chapter.